Jen Esterby is a health tech lead for Barclays Ventures. Barclays Ventures has a mandate to identify, incubate and scale ideas in response to customers' needs. Via their Eagle Labs, they have built a platform to connect the UK's entrepreneurial ecosystem to drive digital skills development and help grow the economy through innovation and change. Jen will provide us today with an overview of the Eagle Lab network and how they've responded to COVID-19. Hi, I'm Jen Esterby, Health Tech Lead for Eagle Labs at Barclays Ventures. I hope you're keeping well and staying safe in your homes and adjusting in these very unique and challenging times. I'm obviously coming to you live from my living room at the moment, so working from home and adjusting to that as the being the new normal down in Bournemouth. Um, I'm very fortunate to be walking distance from the beach, so that's now become part of my daily exercise, which I'm incredibly grateful for. First of all, I just want to thank Silicon Brighton for inviting us to be part of your fantastic event. I know over the course of the day, we're going to hear from some fantastic speakers and hear and, and share some brilliant content. So thank you for allowing us to be part of that. Um, and today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit broadly about the Eagle Lab programme, how we've adapted and adjusted during these challenging times of COVID-19, and also give you an update on what we're doing within the health tech space. So around four years ago, we launched our Eagle Lab program and we wanted to have physical spaces for our communities to come and engage with us. We were delivering a number of digital skills workshops within these spaces, which included coding for children through our code playground sessions, enabling the young adults and teenagers to get the skills to go to the workplace through our life skills initiative and also tea and teach sessions to help people get online and also stay safe online. Within these sites, we also had maker spaces, which uh, featured a number of uh, rapid prototyping equipment, such as 3D printers, laser cutters, and our Eagle Lab engineers were running workshops to enable people to get the skills to learn how to utilize these as well. And as we were reviewing and looking at growing the proposition, with us uh, being a bank and having a history of um, supporting businesses for over the last 300 years, we looked to pivot the model and really look at supporting businesses. So a few months later, we launched our first incubator a second site in Cambridge which was then became home um, to a number of businesses and was the foundation for what the proposition has, has evolved since then. So fast forward to now we've got over 25 sites across the UK they're home to over 470 businesses a total of over 1900 individual co-workers that reside in our physical spaces. And what we've done is we've built ecosystems in each of our communities to really be able to provide these businesses the support that they need um, through our membership uh, platform. So we will offer mentorship to these businesses, access to investor networks, and really give them all the tools and skills that they need to be able to connect to the right people, drive innovation through their business, and grow and scale their, 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 their company. Throughout the last four years, we've had some fantastic companies through, go through our doors and we've actually had some that have graduated through the Eagle Lab program, so to speak, our alumni. Um, and what's been great to see is that these companies have joined us with two founders and have uh, built their team through all of the um, collaboration support opportunities that they've got from the space and actually outgrown, um, outgrown the physical space and needing, needing their own. So there's been some fantastic examples of that. Um, and collectively, a number of our businesses have raised um, over 600 million through various different investment channels which is great. Now obviously over the last several weeks um, in these very uncertain times we wanted to make sure that both our colleagues and our members um, safety was utmost uh, priority so we took the decision a few weeks ago to temporarily, temporarily close our um, physical sites whilst we're obviously going through this pandemic and, and that really uh, meant that as an organisation we needed to um, readjust, realign and look how we could still continue to support and engage our businesses now even more so who really really need that help. Um, I think initially um, before lockdown started it was very unclear and lots of people were very unsure about what support was was available. Um, announcements were coming out daily but particularly for, for founders and for small business owners it was quite a scary and challenging time and, and, and very uncertain as to, as to what was going to happen. So we decided to launch our support hub which is um, as part of our our, our website 
which is labs.uk.barclays forward slash support. Um, and in, in part of building that, we wanted to make sure that we were putting the best and most relevant um, information on there that was going to be of great uh, benefit to our members. So we reached out and gathered as much information from them as possible as to what they would like to see, what information they would like to find out and what, what content would be useful. So we've got four key areas within um, the uh, support hub. The first one is news. So there's a daily download on there of all the relevant uh, articles that are coming out in the press and any kind of government announcements, including obviously the, um, the future fund that's recently been announced. So that content is being updated every single day. We've also got a business continuity section, which has got a, a variety of, of, of content, including um, a number of articles to support you when it comes to how to communicate with your investors during these tough times. Um, I know a lot of founders are quite conscious that investors are, are going to be wanting to know how their investment is doing, but they also want to make sure that the business is doing okay and that, they're, that they've got everything they need to continue to operate. So really great insight on there. Um, we've got some, some articles around isolating yourself, not your business, um, and also ensuring your remote workers. So all of these um, topics that have come as a result of the situation that we're in that businesses would have never had to face before, we're continually updating articles as a response to the feedback we're getting from our members on, on that space. Um, we've also got a wellness um, section on the support hub. Um, now myself, I, I often work from home normally one or two days a week in between traveling uh, often up to London throughout, um, throughout the course of the week. That's sort of been my norm. So I kind of felt that the adjustment wouldn't be that, wouldn't be that difficult. I've already got the technology and the remote access all set up, ready to go. But I, I even felt that um, <clears throat> after a few weeks, I hadn't quite anticipated um, the lack of variety or, or how much I appreciated the variety that my working week would normally give me. Um, and it actually started to have a bit of an impact uh, on my morale and well-being. And it got me thinking that if I'm feeling like this, um, particularly when I'm fairly used to working from home, uh, then the people that are relying so much on going to a physical space every day are going to be going to be feeling that as well. So um, I actually looked through some of the resources that are, are on this hub um, and there's some fantastic articles that are just they're just resources all around you trying to help yourself take care of yourself which is so important at this time um there's a load of, of, of tips there's some access to some um to some uh, events some meditation some yoga um some of which weren't really my bag before if i'm being completely honest but um i've actually found them incredibly valuable um so it's really opened up my eyes to um taking uh, taking time to ensure that you look after your well-being so that's a really great um great tool that i've personally enjoyed using and I'm, i know a number of our business businesses have found useful as well so please check it out um, the final thing is um, our events so as a, a, a physical network of Eagle Labs last year in 2019 we delivered over 2,200 events across our sites um, which is a huge contribution from you know especially 25 of them and, and some of those sites only opened last year so our ecosystem managers lab managers and engineers do a fantastic job in regularly delivering all delivering all sorts of events whether it be breakfast networking fireside chat all the way to large-scale industry events showcasing you know new and emerging technologies and we wanted to continue that because our founders really enjoy that engagement and that activity so we've now adapted to delivering a whole host of virtual events um, covering a number of different topics whether it be funding um, whether it be you know managing um, managing remote uh, workers um, well-being events as I mentioned so you know we, we, we really um, started to uh, evolve those alongside a number of our partners we've got 38 innovation partners across our Eagle Lab network um, who both uh, physical sites and delivery uh, who deliver services for our members have been working with us to to really kind of continually evolve the the events that we can give so um, we're constantly looking to uh, evolve and update this so we'd love to hear feedback thoughts uh, anything that you'd like to see more of less of uh, any new uh, ideas um, please get in touch with us you can get in touch with us through the website we'd love to hear more because that's you know such an important way of us trying to do what we can to, to give you the tools you need to continue to um, you know operate your business um, now, as I mentioned earlier, I lead the health tech proposition. So around about uh, 18 months ago, we were, um, we were looking at uh, the, the, the next sort of um, uh, evolution of, of Eagle Labs. And traditionally, most of our sites have been industry agnostic. So there's been some biases and some themes that have emerged from particular locations. Uh, obviously, a lot of tech businesses across our network. But we wanted to identify um, key industries that are ripe for disruption, where we're seeing more um, startups emerge and also more investment 
investment becoming available. And health tech was one of those areas that we identified as that, um, along with law tech and agri tech. So within the last 18 months, um, we've been busy really kind of building up our partnerships to, to be able to have um, uh, collaboration across industry, academia, SMEs to provide health tech businesses the support that we can just in the way we have traditionally with our other Eagle Lab physical sites. And we're incredibly proud to have uh, to be working with the likes of UCL and Capital Enterprise. We launched um, the UK's first Precision Medicine Accelerator collectively last year and um, we're now actually in halfway through our, our second cohort of the P4 Precision Medicine Accelerator which is which is going great. Um, we've also been working with Immersive UK to deliver a whole host of emerging technology events um, and also working very closely with a number of the academic health science networks. So this has really um, enabled us to build great connections within the healthcare sector and support health tech businesses by signposting them to the relevant support. But a few weeks ago um, we were approached by one of our partners um, Codebase who really you know we work they provide a, a number of mentorship support services to our to our, our residents um, and we were just really talking about how can we collectively come together. We've got this great network of businesses, of universities, of SMEs, of tech companies um, that can, you know, potentially, um, you know, come up with some solutions that might help the current COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so um, we sort of mobilised a working group, which included the University of Edinburgh and the hospital networks there, UCL and obviously UCL hospital networks, Codebase and ourselves. And we, what we wanted to do is really understand the problems that, um, that the frontline were facing during this pandemic. And if you can rewind back to maybe four or five weeks ago, prior to lockdown, um, things were rapidly changing. It felt like every hour there was a new update being released. Obviously, we're having the daily download from the government and it was very uncertain. Certain and, and quite scary times and um, you know knowing what to do knowing how, how we can support was, was quite a challenge but between the, the the insights from the clinicians from people on the front line we were able to establish some of the real key problems that were emerging that urgently needed some support and as a result of that we were able to send out a communication um, really just asking for SMEs or anyone that might have an idea or a solution large organizations that might be able to come forward and help address some of the key areas so the four areas that we identified were slowing the spread of the virus itself, um, enabling home-based care solutions, which will obviously reduce the demand of people actually going into healthcare settings, including such as hospitals, um, supporting the well-being and morale of both NHS and health and social care workers in the community. So this was really, really important. You know, this is something where we wanted to um, make sure that as, as, the, uh, as the demand was really ramping up, what can we do to support these key workers? We need to keep them healthy. We need to keep them safe. We need to keep them working. Um, so that was a really big priority for, for the collective group. And then the final one was assistance for those most vulnerable and those in self-isolation, those who still vitally depend on services being delivered to them but as a result of resources being lower um, was becoming a bit of a challenge. So um, that was just over three weeks ago and we've been inundated with responses which is fantastic. We've had over a hundred businesses that have come forward with their ideas and solutions. Some of them just as simply at idea stage, some of them um, with ready business, uh, uh, with, with solutions ready to go, just wanting to pivot slightly to, um, to address some of the issues coming out from COVID. We've also had uh, a number of large organisations come forward offering support to these companies, which is great. So we've had um, some of our law partners that have come forward offering um, legal support. So free legal advice around medical regs and IP to really help fast track these businesses. We've also had some software companies that have come forward to say they can um, provide some of their developers um, to give that, that, um, that support that these businesses need, particularly those that are developing apps that they want to get live quickly. Um, and there's been a whole host of companies coming forward with 3D printing facilities to, to support obviously the issue around um, PPE, personal protective equipment, which is such a key concern for, for the frontline key workers. So there's been already some great collaboration and I just want to give you a couple of examples of the businesses um, that have come forward that we're, we're starting to, to help. So uh, a company that's um, actually one of the residents in, in one of our Eagle Labs uh, had a solution where it's, it's an app that utilises the camera within a smartphone to 
monitor blood pressure. And that's something they've been developing for some time. But as a result of obviously COVID-19 and the coronavirus, they really wanted to, um, to, to pivot their uh, technology slightly to be able to monitor respiratory rates and blood oxygen levels. So with the support of the software companies, they've been able to get the development um, expertise that they need to be, able to, to, to be able to do this. They've also had some legal support to really protect them from a, an IP perspective, but also um, ensure that they're covering all the right regulations that they need. Um, and we're just helping them through with some, some PR and marketing support in a view that they can hopefully launch their app in a couple of weeks. And one of the hospitals that's uh, included in this working group has, has, uh, has offered to um, support in the pilot of this. So that's just one example of many people coming together to really help this business to fast track the solution that's actually going to make a difference. And this tool can enable people to monitor their symptoms from home. And obviously, if those symptoms become positive or, or appear to look like they've got coronavirus, then obviously they're going into hospital at a time when they know they need to as opposed to when perhaps they might they might be okay so um, really fantastic stuff that's coming through and we are still working through all of the other business ex um, business ideas that, that have come through and we would love to hear more uh, in particular we'd really like to get more support from uh, from large organizations who'd like to get involved in helping these companies really move forward so um, we've we've got a uh, page within our website so labs.uk.barclays forward slash health tech hyphen response so please feel free to get in touch and give us your ideas there if there's anyone that has a suggestion of way that they could help we would love to to hear from you um, and really do what we can to to get these uh, solutions um, you know, making a bit of a difference to those that really need it so thank you so much for your time today. It's um, been a privilege to be part of the event. I hope you enjoy the rest of the day. Um, and as I say, there's, a, there's a, just a slide here that just gives you a bit of information on how to get in touch. So um, if there's anything we can do to help, it'd be great to hear from you. Thank you.